I bought the new PlayStation 5 Slim, and for the last week, I've been using it every single day to see if it's actually worth buying. Is it worth choosing the Slim model over the original PS5? And if you already own a current generation console, is it worth the upgrade? In this video, we will break all of this down, the pros and cons of choosing the Slim, and some major problems you need to be aware of. So my experience so far with the PS5 Slim has been rather interesting, but overall, I absolutely love this console, which is something that I didn't expect to say. When you consider that the PS5 Slim is actually very expensive for a slim model. It costs around $450 for the base console. You need to purchase things like the vertical stand as additional extras for around $30. When you compare this to the original PS5, it actually works out to be more expensive, especially in particular countries like the United Kingdom, where the disk drive add-on is actually like a hundred pounds, uh, 120 euros, which is off scale. However, the more time that I've spent with this console, the more I've gradually fell in love with it. When I first unboxed it last week, I didn't actually think it was that much smaller. Like, it says and claims it's 30% smaller, but when I had them next to one another and I was looking at them, I was like, ah, it, it, it's not that much, like, practically smaller. It looks a little bit, like, not as tall and, and so on. It didn't feel drastically different. Like, when you look at the PS4 Slim, that console's absolutely tiny compared to any other variation of the PS4 that was ever made. However, in real life terms and day-to-day -day use with the PS5 Slim, you do notice how much smaller it is and how much easier it is to use within your house. The biggest issue with the PS5, whether you bought the disc edition or the digital one, the original one from 2020, it was just way too tall and then like, it was like super fat as well, especially if you had the disc edition. So it meant it was either too tall to put within your TV cabinet, so you would have to put it to the side, it was either too fat for you to place it uh, horizontally within a TV stand, which was super frustrating, whereas with the PlayStation 5 Slim, this thing is is actually so much easier to position. You can put it on the TV stand without any issues. It doesn't take up a huge amount of space. So you can also put something like your Xbox on the exact same shelf. Whereas again, when, when you even manage to get the PS5 onto your, your TV stand, you then couldn't fit your Xbox within the same media cabinet. So that would need its own shelf because that's also quite a large console unless you obviously got the, the Series S. Whereas I've noticed the PS5 Slim just discreetly looks so much better within the living room. You can just place it in areas and you don't need to buy new furniture to basically accommodate and house the hardware. Sounds pretty daft and minor, but you do notice the 30% reduction in this area. Another few key changes to the aesthetic of the PS5, other than obviously visually, but the, uh, the inputs on the front of the console are now two USB Type-C ports rather than one USB Type-C and a USB Type-A like on the original model. I absolutely love this change. It makes the console much better to use with a larger range of accessories. So for example, uh, if you're charging your controllers, you would traditionally charge those via the Type-C port with the provided Type-C cable. But if you've then got additional accessories like a PlayStation VR 2, that also occupies a Type-C connection on the front of the console. Now on the fat version of the PlayStation 5, this only had one USB Type-C port to do absolutely everything, because the ports at the back are also USB Type-A. So this meant when you wanted to charge your controllers or you wanted to use your PSVR headset, you had to sort of choose one over the other and then also get uh, adapter cables or different Type-C to Type-A cables to have charging docks and so on. It was just a little bit annoying. Whereas this provides the gamer much more flexibility and also if you want to have an external SSD drive connected to the console, predominantly a lot of these drives that you'll pick up on Amazon will come with a USB Type-C to Type-C connection on them because they're designed to be plugged into like a MacBook or something like that that uses all Thunderbolt port type stuff. So again, you would often have to buy another type of cable to basically play your PS4 games off of like an external hard drive or external SSD rather. Uh, whereas with this, you can just throw it straight into the console and still have a place to charge or use your PSVR 2 headset without having to constantly unplug stuff and have cables lying everywhere. Now, the version of the PlayStation 5 Slim that I purchased was the disc edition. Something super cool about the new PS5 Slim is the upgradability of it. So you can uh, buy the cheaper Di digital or digital version and that does look super slim because it doesn't have the little fat disk drive <laughs> sticking out the side that is quite a small console you can purchase that and then if you desire to in the future you can get an optional extra for a disk drive which is a very cool premise of how that operates it's a, a highly requested feature that people have wanted from xbox with the xbox series s that ability to just throw some discs in and of course with the original playstation it was highly requested by the community 
I absolutely love this modular design that they went for here, where you can even remove the disk drive from the disk edition if you wanted to as well and turn that into a digital edition if you realize you never use uh, the disk drive, for example. But the disk drive is very advantageous because you can get games so much cheaper. So I originally started off with a fat PlayStation 5 all digital edition back in 2021 because stock was super hard and it was the only console type that I could get. Problem was, I was then trapped into the Sony ecosystem when it came to purchasing my games. I could only purchase games off of the Sony store so they could dictate whatever price they wanted it to be. You know, so Assassin's Creed is always an example I go to. Back in the day, Assassin's Creed Valhalla was like $70 on the PlayStation store. But yet you could buy it on disc for about £24 for the PS5 version, which is infuriating because you could literally buy like two, three games for the price of one on disc. Uh, in a majority of comparisons uh, when you have the old digital edition. Whereas if you uh, have the disc, you just have that flexibility to go, okay, let's look online, get that disc, that, that game much cheaper than on the store. Now, of course, when Sony do sales, like Black Friday's just been, you know, the holiday sales, Halloween sales, New Year's sales, they do loads of sales every two, three weeks. They do dramatically cut down the prices on a lot of titles, you know, 50% off, uh, 40% off, quite good, but it does mean sometimes you just have to wait around a lot if you want to get those titles, if you are trapped in on a digital console. Whereas obviously with the new PS5 Slim, you now have control as the consumer to decide if you want to use discs in the future. Now, there are obviously a few caveats to this. The disc add-on is quite expensive. So if you buy the base console, then buy the disc add-on in the future, the console actually costs more than just basically buying a fat disc edition that you can pick up in a sale at the moment. So it, it does dramatically add up. Now, in the UK, this disc add-on is around £100. And it's 120 euros uh, if you're sort of in the France area and all that type of stuff. But in America, I believe off the top of my head, it's, it's an 80 $85 upgrade, which is actually cheaper than all of the other countries because obviously 100 Great British Pounds converted to dollars is around $120. So for some reason, in the UK and Europe, they've absolutely cranked up the price of this disc add-on. So from my perspective as a British dude, trying to recommend that as an upgrade, it's a bit of a rip-off. Whereas if I was in America, I, I could cope with $80 because that's the equivalent to £60 to upgrade to a disc in the future, which is like the price of one game. So that you, know, you can stomach that a little bit better. But in the UK, it's basically the price of two games to get that add-on, which I think is just a little bit too expensive. Now, something I want to talk about is the actual setup process of the PlayStation 5 Slim. Uh, fundamentally, nothing's changed. It's the exact same console, it's the exact same hardware. Technically, it's the same software, all that type of stuff. But there are a few little tweaks that do occur when you do set up the PS5 Slim for the very first time. Now, they haven't changed any of the graphics on the screen. It still shows the original PS5 when it says, welcome to your console, which isn't a big deal. You only ever see this once. So I wouldn't expect Sony to go out their way to change this to a PS5 Slim model. That would be a bit over the top. Top. But what I did encounter was some Wi-Fi connection issues. I'd seen some people talking about this on Reddit, and I was like, oh, yeah, whatever, you know, that's probably not an issue. When I set up my console, I had the exact same issue. My console would not detect my Wi-Fi via wireless. The router wouldn't detect it at all. So what I had to do was I had to grab the LAN cable from my gaming PC, throw that into the console, worked fine, go through the updating process of the latest uh, operating system, update the controller, all that type of stuff, blah, 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 blah. Then once all of that was finished, it then connected to the internet once we were signed into the PlayStation uh, thing. The wireless connector was working perfectly fine. Flashback. So I'm just undergoing the process of setting up my PS5 Slim and it seems to have frozen. I've never experienced this before. So we've gone through the whole network setup, had some issues there. Then we updated this, the software and then we updated the controller. It literally just finished updating the controller and it's stuck on this screen here. It's been on this screen for like five minutes. I don't really want to turn the console off because it says don't, don't turn it off while it updates. So I'm a little bit nervous here. Having a lot of issues with the setup on the PS5 Slim that I've never had before with the PS5 with the disc edition and digital edition is very bizarre. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it off by pressing the power button here and see what happens. All right, so it seems to be turning off with no dramas, so that's not too bad. Hope we haven't, hope we haven't broke it. <laughs> In theory, it should... Oh, what the hell? It's the exact same problem. Oh no, hey, okay. Okay, right, so we can now turn the controller on. All right, so that's super interesting. So it, it was a glitch with the disk drive. So obviously because the disk drive is now an additional add-on, like you can opt to not have it or buy it later, 
it was basically registering the disk drive as if it was not connected right. So I think it was a glitch in the setup process of it verifying that we actually had a disk drive connected. That makes sense. Now what's about to happen next could be quite interesting. It's just asking me to insert a disk, which is pretty standard. But if you've watched my previous video, you'll be aware that I imported this console from America. And America have a different disk format to the EU. We have PAL over here, but you guys have NTSC. So it's going to be interesting to see if a UK disk will work with the disk drive on an American console because this isn't out in the UK right now. It's available to pre-order towards the tail end of this week of me filming this video. Something that always confuses me with the PS5 is which way the disk actually goes in correctly. I I think it's this way. Let's hope for the best. So that's amazing. It does appear to be copying the disc perfectly fine, even though it's a different format. This is an American console. It's a UK European disc. So that's good to know. It's not a complete waste of time that we bought the disc edition. Now, one thing I do really like about the PlayStation setup are these QR codes. It makes it so fast and easy to actually get signed in. Just literally scan the QR code on the screen, sign in with your iPhone to your PlayStation account and just basically approve the device and you're up and running. This was the same when I was setting up the PlayStation portal. You just signed in and that was it. There we go. We're literally signed into my PlayStation account with, with no dramas. There's nothing worse than using a keyboard on the console with a controller and you're like trying to type super slow on the screen. So I love that. It speeds everything up. End of flashback. Now the biggest and most noticeable upgrade with the PlayStation 5 Slim is of course the internal storage. So this console now comes with a one terabyte internal SSD, which I think top of my head uh, accounts for around 883 gigabytes of usable space for actual games that you can then install onto that after the operating system and all that type of stuff that that takes up. Now the original PlayStation 5 came with an 800 and something terabyte SSD, which meant you only had around 630 gigabytes of usable space, which sounds like a lot, but when you had things like Call of Duty Warzone on there, and just only a few other titles, maybe like Cyberpunk. I remember when I first had my PS5, the fat one, I had about three or four games on there, and that was it like maxed out, the, the, the internal storage. Whereas having these extra 200, 300 gigabytes of space that's actually usable does make a dramatic difference. I've noticed I can install, I've got like Spider-Man, I've got uh, FIFA, the new one, FC24, whatever it's called, and then I've got like Assassin's Creed Mirage, different games like that on there, and I've hardly used any space. I've still got like 700 gigabytes, 600 gigabytes there, which just gives me a lot of confidence to play about with the types of games that I want to install. So when I had the original PS4, Five, the fat one, I was always a little bit nervous about putting PS4 games on the internal storage because the internal storage is so valuable, you know, you need that next generation speed for next generation games. So it meant I needed an external SSD, external hard drive to put things like The Last of Us Part 2 on there, other games that I really enjoy playing like Mafia Collection, Mafia 2, all them definitive editions. Some of those old PS4 titles would have to have an external drive, which was fine. They ran fine on the PS5, that type of stuff, but it just meant, you know, you'd always have to remember to have that plugged in. If you had it uh, disconnected, you'd be like, oh, you can't play this game. You'd have to go find your SSD because you maybe put it somewhere else. Whereas now with this additional space on the internal SSD drive, because the PS4 games aren't that huge in comparison to the PS5 games, because, you know, the most of them are like 1080p, maybe the 4K 30 FPS at a push because they've got a PS4 Pro patch on it. Uh, those just don't take up too much space now. I basically got an extra 100, 200 gigabytes that I can play with, with some OG titles from the last generation that I just really enjoy playing. And I can just access those straight away on the super fast uh, load times on my PS5 Slim. Something else that I did differently with the PS5 Slim this time was, it was great to have a brand new console. There's something about it that's made me more excited about playing games. Like, even though it's the exact same PS5 as what I already own, because it's different and it's smaller, like I've been like, oh, I can't wait to turn my PS5 on tonight and play some games. Just because it looks different, it's like a weird psychological thing that just got me a little bit more hyped about playing games. But what I've done this time is I've treated this PS5 Slim different to my other consoles. Because I've owned the other PlayStations for a couple of years now, I've got loads of games on there in clutter. Where when I boot it up, I'm like, oh, I need to uninstall that game. I'm not playing that anymore. But then you're like, oh, I'll keep it. I might maybe play it. So I've got loads of rubbish on there that I'm not playing and it's just clogging up the space. So then when I do buy a new game, it's like, oh, you need to clear space. Delete this, delete that. And it's like frustrating. Whereas this is like a brand new pure console that's clean. There's nothing on it. So it meant I could be very specific and intentional about the titles that I want to play. And I've actually been using this as like a, a single player console. So I've got, right, got Spider-Man 2 on there. I've got Assassin's Creed. I've got some FIFA, a little bit of multiplayer on that as well. But I've basically just been strict with the modern titles that I want to play 
on this thing. So Avatar is something that I'm going to be preloading on there soon because that comes out in a couple, but literally like next week. I'm really excited about that sort of single player game that also has a bit of co-op. And this console, because of that, is actually going to be going in my bedroom as that fun console that I boot up late at night, play in bed, do whatever. Because right now I'm in the process of renovating my bedroom and creating an awesome gaming setup, both a pro gaming setup for my gaming PC, but I also want to create a more casual setup for console gaming on my PlayStation and Xbox. And the PS5 Slim, because it's small, it doesn't look silly in my bedroom where you, you go to your bedroom, it's like this massive console in there. It's nice and small, it's a little bit more discreet, it's got a nice stylish look to it. It's got a, obviously a Blu-ray player as well, so it is multifunctional. And then I connect that to my new 48-inch uh, OLED TV that I'm going to be getting from Panasonic. And I can hook that up and it's, it's going to be so good. I just can't wait to have that casual setup there in, in my bedroom that's just super fast to play. Because to be fair to the PlayStation 5, it's very good at staying up to date even though I'm not a huge fan of rest mode. I've talked about this in the past on the channel. You know, it, it had a lot of issues on the PS4 with it. But it always makes sure your games are up to date. The software is always up to date. So you can just turn it on and you're in the game within seconds and you're playing. Whereas like Xbox, it does have quick resume, which I love. But quick resume often glitches out where you have to like restart the game, close the game, launch it again. So you, it, it kind of doesn't really do what it's meant to because you get disconnected from the server or that type of thing uh, on games like Halo Infinite and stuff. It's a little bit glitchy. I'm even thinking about hooking this thing up to an awesome sound system in my bedroom. So I again, don't have headphones on. I'm not really playing any multiplayer games. Just get an epic soundbar, huge subwoofer. Just have a really cinematic experience gaming at 4K in HDR with absolutely stunning visuals on an OLED display. It's really got me excited again about playing video game. Now, actually throughout this year, Sony has released so many different products. I think they've been much more active than Xbox. Like this launch at the start of the year, the, the, the PlayStation Edge controller. We've had a slim variation of the console. We've had the Spider-Man PS5 console, a whole bunch of colors for the, the console plates. There's been the PSVR 2 and also the PlayStation Portal. I, I've probably missed a product within there as well. There's a bunch of headsets as well they've released like earbuds and stuff. It's been crazy the amount of accessories and hardware that they've released this year, whereas from Xbox, all we've had is like some Starfield limited edition controllers and obviously the carbon black edition of the Xbox Series S, which is similar to the Slim. It's got upgraded storage, but same obviously hardware. Now, because Sony has been so active over the last 12 months and also the game libraries of titles that they've released, Spider-Man 2, God of War Ragnarok, it's gave me huge confidence as a consumer in PlayStation. I've made videos in the past where I've said the Xbox was better than the PlayStation and, and likewise, I've sometimes the PlayStation is better than the Xbox. It all, all, all depends on how you're viewing it. But I was always a huge fan of Xbox Game Pass and the Xbox Series S. I just found that was great value. It still is great value. You can get unbelievable uh, your cheap white edition console now or even the black one with the up upgraded storage. Pay $10, $15 a month for your Game Pass and you can, ha you can have an insane experience. But where Xbox has lacked in the last 12 months has been those first party titles. They've been rather lackluster, if, if we're honest. Like Starfield was maybe like the biggest one but th that we could talk about. Uh, but all the other ones like Redfall, those different types of games that were very, very underwhelming. We've had other titles such as Forza Motorsports, but you can't really brag about Forza. Like that's just a standard racing game. You wouldn't go, oh, I'm going to buy a PS5 just for Gran Turismo 7. You know, it's just a racing game. You could play Gran Turismo 4 or 5 and have like the same experience, like play Forza 5, <laughs> just the same tracks type thing, just different cars. So from that perspective, Xbox hasn't really been too active in the department of leveling up the console generation. That's not to say next year, might be dramatically different. You know, we're obviously probably going to see an Xbox Series X Slim or maybe like an Xbox Series X Triple X or something like a pro version. It's even more powerful and they might release a load of games uh, alongside that that might be holding off for a more impactful 2024. But Sony has, without a doubt, dominated this year with releases from games to hardware and everything in between. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And in conclusion, I think the PS5 Slim isn't really worth it unless you can get a great deal. Currently, the main PlayStation 5 is heavily discounted and it's the exact same hardware. So you may as well spend all that extra money on games or on some super cool accessories to level up your gaming setup. And if you want to see me unbox some of the craziest and coolest PlayStation accessories ever made, you should watch this video next.